Hello and welcome back to Bits and Bobs. Today's video is the life and legacy of King Charles I, the monarch of the month for March. So here we begin with his father, who is King James VI of Scotland and King James I of England, and his mother, who is, as we can see here, Princess Anne of Denmark. The two were happily married and had many children, one of which, of course, being King Charles, or the future King Charles I, who was born on the 19th of November in the year 1600 at Dunfermline Abbey. And King Charles I was the last ever king to be born in Scotland. And here we can see the lovely abbey where he was born in the year 1600 on a nice November day. So perhaps not as funny as this picture here. So there we go. Now then, it was reported that the young king was a very ill child and was so ill, in fact, that he could not walk unaided until the age of seven years old. However, despite this, he was very popular in with his family and very much loved by his family and loved his family very much as well and was very, very sad indeed when his brother did pass away. As Charles I grew older, he educated himself and also was very kind and charitable, giving many donations to the poor people at the time who needed the money most. And then even in 1624, he took an eight-month trip to Spain looking for a wife, but did not find one over in Spain. Then in 1625, his father did pass away, and so on the 25th of March, 1625, age 25, King Charles I ascended the throne and was crowned on the 2nd of February, in 1626, the year after, so 11 months after his coronation took place, he was crowned as King Charles I of England and Scotland. So there we go, he is now the king. Now this is his family, as you can see here, as he did marry the same year as his ascension to the throne in 1625. Who did he marry? Well, he married his only wife for his whole life and reign, Henrietta Maria of France. And we can see the two there in this picture. They had seven, eight, sorry, eight children together, as you can see there two of which would become future kings of England, who would be, of course, later known as Charles II and James II, or, of course, when they were born, Prince Charles and Prince James, who would, as I say, both become kings. Now then, now that King Charles I is the king, we will now go through a timeline of the key events of his reign, beginning with 1628 and the murder of Lord Buckingham. As you can see there, he was stabbed to death in a pub, and he was one of King Charles's most closest adv advisors and friends. In 1629, a proclamation of the king dissolved parliament. So King Charles I dissolved parliament. And then from 1630, for the next 10 or for the next 11 years, sorry, he ruled by himself with the full power of the king with no parliament to hold him back. During this time, in 1633, construction began on Buckingham Palace, as you can see there. So a building that began construction almost 400 years ago, still being used by royals today. In 1640, parliament was brought back in for a new long parliament, which lasted 20 years, until 1660. But over a few years later, troubles began between King Charles and Parliament, and then in 1642, war was declared, but not any war, civil war. And King Charles I raises his standard at Nottingham as the years of war began between Parliament and the Royalists. In 1643, it was going well for the Royalists with the defeat of the Parliamentarians and Cromwellian forces at Bristol and the taking of Bristol. But the year after, things went the other way with, as we can see here, a Royalist defeat at the Battle of Marston Moor. And there were many, many battles, of course, all over the country, up and down, for many years during the English Civil War. And, of course, the leader of the opposing side to King Charles I was Oliver Cromwell. And he led, of course, the parliamentary forces. He even was so fixed to his cause that he banned Christmas in England. He made Christmas illegal to celebrate. In 1645, Parliament can, uh, creates the New Model Army, a very effective fighting army against the Royalist forces. And then in 1646... King Charles I is captured by the Scots and handed over. Then he does escape, though, to the Isle of Wight, where he takes refuge for a while at the Isle of Wight, but it does not last for long, even with help from some Scottish rebels, because then, as I'm sure lots of us know, in 1649, King Charles I was brought to Whitehall to have his head cut off, or in other words, to be executed, as we can see there, a public display of King Charles I losing his head. And there we go, that's the end of his reign, very sudden, and of course very promptly, the new ruler, not a king, but the leader of the country was Oliver Cromwell for a few years before the next king was brought back in, who was, as I say, Charles II. So there we go, King Charles I reigned from 1625 to 1649, a 24-year reign, and he died aged 49. Of course, he may have lived longer, that was obviously a not natural death. So there we go, comment down below any extra King Charles I facts you have, and then for the next few weeks we'll show you some King Charles I coins every Monday. Please, of course, subscribe if you've enjoyed. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon for some more coins in the future on Bits and Bobs. Bye for now.